especially if it's not true. Why would you put an untruth in a letter that isn't what you believe Mr. Mulroney wanted? You know, I'm thinking about it now. I cannot, I cannot really recall why I put that in. All right. You and I are the innocent victims of this vendetta that is you and Brian Mulroney. Yes. And you are still the prime target. That's correct. So, in effect, what you say to Mr. Mulroney, that it's you and Mr. Mulroney yes. that are the targets here. Yes. Yes. And then you write again, the political justice scandal, Airbus affair, will not go away by itself. The people behind the conspiracy must be exposed through determined actions and brought to justice. You and I have a responsibility to our families, our friends, the international companies, to Canadians and to Canada ourselves. You write that? Absolutely. Yes. That's not in Mr. McKay's draft, but you add that? Yes. And that's a true statement? Yes. Page two, top of the page? Yes. Which was wrong, as you know. I told you this was not true, but this is what you wanted. You didn't intend to apologize, but Elmer told you this is what he wanted and you were going to give it to him. Since the draft, yes. All right. I had no reason to apologize sure. for anything. May I state for the record that my testimony under oath in prior legal proceedings is the only correct description of our business arrangement. You say that. Obviously, when you testify under oath, it has to be true, right? You know that. States like it. Yes. Even though we've gone over Eurocopter and what you said in Eurocopter, we talked about that, so I won't go there again. But I won't. I still disagree with you. Oh, you do? I did not look at the transcript, but I did now. Oh, you did? And it's a completely different ballgame. It's a different ballgame? Yes. I see. Well, I read it to you, sir. Yes, where the, the judge stopped Mr. Bernstein and asked, him, asked me not to answer questions. Well, you know the transcript speaks for itself, and okay. I'm yes, uh, very what, content to have that what transcript before the commissioner, yes. and uh, I say that it speaks for itself. Okay. All right. You say, I believe that my statements in the book, The Secret Trial, together with my testimony under oath, Thank you, you. you follow politics, and you understand people, I think. You would agree with that? I thank you for that. I know my IQ. All right. So what I've said is a true statement? Yes. All right. Now, what I can't understand is why it would be necessary for Mr. Mulroney to have a letter from you to show that you and he are friends so he can tell that to the Prime Minister and that would make a difference. You must have thought about that. What could that possibly... What could be true about that? Mr. Wilson, if you would live in my world, the politicians come to you with the strangest requests. I see. And you better respond. And you know how it works in politics. You see it every day. And if Mr. Mulroney, and I said this very clearly at the Ethics Committee. I can't use that testimony, no, sir, but so if it's he, of no but value to it. me. If he wanted whatever he wanted and was reasonable to finally work with me together and make this inquiry happen. I would have said a lot of things for courtesy reasons. But you signed the but letter. The yeah. When you sign a letter, we sign letters with yes. our signature yes. indicating that you're telling the truth. That's why you sign a letter, isn't it? Mr. Wolzen, if Is that every answer my question, please? No. No. If every letter you sent out and you exchange with politicians would be through, we would have a quite different world. And don't tell me that you don't know. We'd have another scandal. A dozen, perhaps. Yes. So you sign the letter knowing that it's not true in part, right? Yes. The fact that you and Mr. Mulroney are good friends would be a reason why Mr. Harper would call an inquiry. In your mind, you thought that? Yes, and since he said he wanted to clean up Ottawa, and that was one of the main reasons why he got elected. You are not just saying uh, three or four or five hundred thousand is nothing when you finally get nothing for it. So it was a combination. 
You paid him the money in 1993 and 1994. Yeah, but he did nothing in the meantime. This is now, now he refused to help. Now I want my money back. Yeah, this is now 2007. It's 13 yes. years later. Yes. But in 98 and in 2004, if I may remind you, we had discussions on pasta. 29th of March 2007, dear Brian, I strongly recommend that you request a public inquiry concerning the Airbus affair, the political, the political vendetta, and the political justice scandal related to the right on over Brian Maroney, Frank Moores, Gary Ouellette, and Carl Heinz Schreiber before April 2, 2000. So you give him four days. Yes. You say to him, today I'd like to get your attention concerning my letter from July 2004 as a reminder to the pasta business and my request for you to support to fight child obesity. I did not even get an answer from you. And on top of this, you refused to see Elmer McKay and Mike Cochran when they wanted to talk to you about the anti-obesity project, contrary to His Royal Highness Prince Charles, Bill Clinton, Tony Blair, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Jamie Oliver, and Dr. Arya Sharma. Uh, 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 Mr. Royston, excuse me, please. That was 42? Yes. Ah, yes. yeah. OK. For the first time, May 8, 2007, and any letter I've seen that you've written, you write to him now, Dear Brian, the conspiracy and cover-up action of Prime Minister Harper, Brian Mulroney, Robert Nicholson, the AG for Canada, the IAG department, are responsible for the proceedings at the Ontario Court of Appeal concerning my extradition case. So now, Brian Mulroney is involved in the cover-up. Yes. Yeah. See you. <laughs>